removed every excuse, destroyed every argument, removed all coverage. Now this is telling us, gentlemen, that I, the main focus of our preaching here, purpose of the series, is preach against their sin. They are in opposition to God. They are rebels. Unless they see their sin uncovered, unless they see it as what it is, rebellion against God, satanic uh, submission to the devil, they'll not depart from it. Yeah, they can move their mouth and say, Jesus, come to my heart, but they're still in sin. They'll still go to hell. Just professing Christ does nothing. If the sinner's not turned from his sin, which estranges him from Christ, will bring Christ's judgment. We preach against sin. Christ's first sermon again was repent. Christ said he told the world the deeds were evil. Christ said that he preached that they had no covenant for the sin. This is the Bible. This is what we must focus on. We must gird up the Lord to our mind and hit sin, hit sin, hit sin. Till the sinner cries out, I surrender. I'm a rebel. I'm evil. I'm a child of the devil. I turn. I'll switch to the moral governors I deserve as he deserves as Christ. And I'll obey him from sin forever because he deserves it. Amen. Hammer sin till it's no more. Don't let up. Don't let the devil come in and give you a, 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 a false sense of compassion. Oh, that person's crying. Let me back up. God, I love you. I love you. No, you hit some more. Hit it some more. Hit it some more. It's how Christ preached, how John the Baptist preached, how the prophets and the apostles preached. Hit it, hit it, till it's no more. Amen. Matthew 19. Hit sin with the hammer of God's word. Break ground and grind with the power. And the boot heel of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, now How do we do this? Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. Young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect. Now notice, Christ correlates perfection in verse 21 with entering into life, verse 17. Except one's perfect, who lives as perfect as the heavenly father's perfect, it will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Perfect just means all you know to do, you do. You know you should not do, you don't do. You live according to the light you have, complete obedience. You live in obedience in God's Going on, verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. For he had many, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish verse 21. Christ said, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. When the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. What did Christ do when the man said, oh, I want to get saved, I want to say a prayer, I want to get saved? He gave him the law. Romans 3, 20 says, by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. Romans 7 says, the law makes sin exceedingly sinful. And Paul said, I had not known sin but by the law. Psalm 19, 7 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Yeah. Galatians 3, 24 declares, the law is the schoolmaster to bring one to Christ. Give him the law. But not just as some of them said, this is a systematic, robotic pattern. Have you done this? Have you done this? No, no, no. Be Christ was led by the Spirit. Amen. Yeah. He preached the commandments were necessary based on the hearer. Go up there and let the Spirit of God use you to preach against the seed by giving him the law. But again, as the Spirit leads. Right. Again, if someone's twitching like a woman, he's a man, you're ready to preach on covetousness or preach on murder. <laughs> preach on adultery of the heart. <laughs> the homo looking to lust another man's committing adultery. So Christ used the law, we see. And we need to use it as the Spirit of God leads us to. Turn with me to Mark 1. We're just about at the conclusion of preaching so it's given to sinner. See, we must live like Jesus, free from sin. We must preach like Jesus, full of fasting and prayer and the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. And uh, we also must uh, preach as Jesus preached, really uh, testifying of the world that is evil, uncovering their excuses, also using God's laws, the Spirit of God leads to expose their sin and bring conviction of the conscience. Their own conscience will prove to them that they are guilty. Their own conscience will testify against them that their deeds are evil. That's what we're aiming for. When you preach, we don't aim for the emotions. We aim for the conscience, as, as all of you, I'm sure, well know. Aim for the conscience. And let me say this briefly as we uh, go to Mark 1. Conviction is not the end goal of preaching. Amen. Conviction is just really the first step. Yeah. They need to be convicted in their conscience. 
Then they become convinced of that conviction of sin in their mind. Then they become contrite in their emotions. They start to feel godly sorrow, which worketh repentance, not to be repentant of the free salvation. And then they choose to repent and be converted as an act of their will. Shoot for the conscience. Then you then, then, then that gives intelligence to the uh, understanding of the intellect. Then the emotions start to become uh, recognize the guilt and start to become sorrowful. Then the will will turn to repent. But make the Christ be converted. Build the spirit and live the vain of life. Preach. Yeah. Yeah. We don't just stop the conviction at the beginning. We want them converted. Christ wants them converted. Yeah. Conviction is the necessary first step. Yeah. Mark 1, verse 14. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. We need to preach that Christ preach repent. But after preaching repent, we also need to tell them to believe. Not enough to be just convicted. Not enough just to repent and feel sorry or confess sin. They must leave sin. They must put faith in Christ who made atonement for their soul by the shedding of blood, which I wish no remission of sins, gave his life, was buried, raised. Now they must put faith in him and obey him. Continuing in the word to be his disciples. So we must also preach repentance and faith in Christ. And lastly, the third thing, let's go to Luke 22. We must live like Christ. We must preach like Christ. There's one more thing we must do. We must be careful, open preachers, that we don't neglect this part. Luke 22. Look at verse 31. Scripture reads, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy breath. Christ, after he preached, stayed in faith, he believed his hearers would be converted. Brethren, when we're preaching to rabble, mob, mobbish crowds, a macabre sinner. Are we believing that they're going to repent and be converted? Or are we seeing our jobs done just making them raise? Is your goal to see people raise or is your goal to see them repent? <laughs> is your goal to see people raise or to see them repent? <laughs> True repentance will first up. We'll, we'll follow raging usually, but we don't stop at the raging. We don't stop at the inflamed conscience now. Let's have the truth and the light of truth. Well, 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 Athens has been benighted in darkness for so long. We follow on to see them repent, to be converted, feel and preach the gospel themselves. We need to still have the broken heart of Jesus and the faith of Jesus. Remember, Hebrews 11 says, without faith it is impossible. Please, God. If we're preaching and not believing, they will repent and be converted, and we're in sin. But whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Romans 14. We need to believe. For the salvation of the soul. Let me tell you. Number one, the true faith that will see conversion. I'm not just talking about people making decisions or people, you know, signing a card. I'm talking about true conversion we see in the book of Acts. It's not going to happen without prayer. It's not going to happen without fasting. It's not going to happen without a holy, sin free life. Number one. But number two, when we really have it in our heart, it will change our preaching. The Holy Ghost will be able to work deeper in us and through us. We won't just be giving just that we'll just be preaching against our sin. After raining against our sin, we'll also give Christ. But we'll not give him in the way the false church gives him. I hope you say a prayer. We'll give him in the way he says. Unless you forsake all, you cannot follow me. Unless you deny yourself on the cross, you cannot be my disciple. We'll give him in the requirements of repentance and true conversion. Amen. So we must believe. And Christ said in the book of John, he prayed to the Father. He said, Father... I pray not only for those that will hear and believe me, but for those they'll preach to who will believe on me as well. We, might, we must not only believe for those we hear to repent and be converted, but those we must believe that they will preach themselves and that others will hear and do that and be converted as well. So brothers and brothers, to recap, to preach so as a convict of sin, we have to live like Jesus who preached and convicted of sin. We have to live a life as he did in which no one could convince him of even one sin. We have to preach as he did out of a holy life, a life of fasting, prayer, consecration, in which the power of the Holy Ghost moved in him and through him to commit sinners of their sin. And lastly, we have to believe as Jesus believed. We have to believe that as we preach the power of the Holy Ghost, living a holy life, he will do as he said in John 16, verse 7 through 11. He will convince them and convict them of sin, 
of righteousness and judgment, and they'll come to repentance towards God, faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we just